How's it going, everybody? Brent Alvarez and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio, February 8, 2024, figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. We have a lot to talk about, as we, we seemingly have every single day for the last month and eight days. Mm. It absolutely never ends. And What's, uh, a, what's a month and eight days? What's, what's that, that day? That's today. We're a month and eight days into uh, a new year. Into the year, yeah. And this year has been completely nuts. Well, the end and, of last uh, year was the last week of last year was pretty big too. Yes. The last two weeks of last year. Well, we have a lot more coming out involving Vince McMahon today, Dave. So, what is the latest? You tell me what's the latest. I can comment on whatever. I've been uh, immersed in Vince McMahon, actually. So, uh, I mean, what highlights are we going to go through? Well, I don't think there are any highlights, but uh, we had the story today about uh, actually came out. Uh, the Vince McMahon resignation story from the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. they basically stated that uh, Ari Emanuel and Mark Shapiro called him and told him he needed to go. Well, I think that's uh, pretty obvious. Where, where you know, I mean, the only people who could tell him would be those two. I don't think Nick Khan would be the one to tell him. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, that's makes all the sense in the world. I mean, they. You know, once once Slim Jims came, you know, I mean, you know what? Even if nothing happened, even if no sponsors came at the first moment, they had to get rid of them. Um, there's just no way around it. They had to. So, I mean, it's and, and again, I've said this before. I'll say it many times, especially now. You know, even though the story is, is that Ari Emanuel knew nothing about the details of the Janelle Grant stuff, which perhaps he should have. Given that, um, you know, some of that must have um, some of it, some of it, you know, the board of directors knew some of it. I don't know what, if, you know, how far their investigation went. But the one thing that's come out in the last couple of days is that the police, when they raided his place, and this is last summer, this is in July. Um, they were raiding, looking for his phone, um, and they were asking questions about basically the stuff that came out in this lawsuit. So the feds were aware of these allegations they were aware enough to know that they had to get his phone um i don't know that that again our emmanuel knew perhaps nobody in wb knew um nevertheless they knew enough they knew enough they knew about all the ndas and um that alone should have been a warning sign and they did not heed that warning sign and um you know whatever it was i mean like uh I, I, I mean, you know, Vince has that aura, and they believe that, you know, Vince at 78 years old, you know, even though the company, when Vince was gone, caught fire, and granted, some of the seeds were sown while Vince was there of this turnaround, no doubt about it, but the fact is, is that they did better when he was gone, and they still felt, you know, that, that thing of, you know, Vince McMahon, it's like Dana White, it's like, you can't live without him, they're, the, they're it. And it's like that there was a day that was true, but that day had ended a ways back. WWE was, um, I mean, as a company, they're financially, they're fine. And, and they don't need Vince's acumen and genius or whatever it is that, that they perceived him to have. Um, I mean, they, they, made, they made a bad mistake um, in keeping him in the first place, putting him as an executive, the executive chairman of the board, whatever. Um, I mean, that's, so for that, they got embarrassed. Um, so, uh, yeah, they had to let him go. But, I mean, he had to go. I mean, this was way too – there was no way around it. They couldn't have run that Royal Rumble and and ever had everyone re read this thing and go, how can you employ this guy? I mean, it was it was beyond. And sponsors would have, would have gone. I mean, who would want to sponsor a company with Vince McMahon as the executive face at this stage of the game? You couldn't get it. So, um, you know, I mean, there's uh, – question of how many more people are going to start talking i mean there will be more that start talking now um but how many more women are going to come forward and what are they going to say and uh you know this story's not going to go away it's going to be a pretty big one and um, you know one of the big things vice had a story um today uh about uh ashley massaro and i don't really want to get too into it on this show because i actually have written an incredible amount on it that'll be in the issue tomorrow but um, you know, I guess the key things were in the story is that um, Dr. Fernando Rios 
pretty much like even though his memory was different and you got to remember that this situation took place in uh 2006 that's 17 years ago you know um so people's memories are not going to be perfect and coincide but he knew enough to know that that people knew and i mean i just remember when this thing came out and people in wwe i mean they said there was no meeting that they didn't know that they didn't know this and that she was making all that up and while there's no um proof of the meeting and john laurinaitis did not uh say that there was a meeting he did say that they knew uh, Rios said that they knew, you know, Paul London's been talking about who's, who's Ashley's girlfriend at, at the, right around that time talked about stuff with Vince Vince sitting on her and things like that. Um, and, and the other stuff. And, you know, there's again, like exact details. I mean, her, her affidavit and everything is out there. You have to remember that she later apologized to them and blamed Constantine Constantine Kairos, her lawyer, for pressuring her into this. And, you know, she apologized to Vince. She apologized to Stephanie. She apologized to Kevin Dunn. So there's, there's a, it's a weird story. Um, and, you know, as far as, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, what, whatever it is, I mean, you're just, uh, it's, it's, it's a story that's going to haunt them just because, again, when they, um, their response, appears to have been at the time appears to have been dishonest yet at the same time uh, she did apologize for that statement before she died so it is a really weird it's a really weird story well the the dishonesty you were talking about was they released a statement after the affidavit came out and it stated that they had never been informed of the alleged assault and then if they had been, it would have been reported immediately to the base commander. So that was what they said immediately after the affidavit came out. Right. And then later, uh, you know, John Laurinaitis' lawyer uh, stated that WWE management was aware of the claims, but they objected to calling the situation a cover-up. And this time they claimed that Johnny, like most upper-level management, at some time became aware of the allegations and ensured all proper WWE protocols were followed, including privacy for the alleged victim. So they did know and uh, claimed that they did not know. So exactly. that was absolutely dishonest. And, and, all, and, also, and also Rios, um, you know, uh, the doctor, said that he, he reported to John, although he also said that Ashley asked him not to report it to anyone. But he reported to John Laurinaitis, and John Laurinaitis said he already knew. So, you know, he John Laurinaitis clearly was had it reported to him by at least two different people. And what they followed up on, I mean, um, you know, there was an investigation. The investigation kind of went nowhere. It was not a WWE investigation. It was actually a, uh, a Navy investigation, I believe, that took place, you know, regarding that. So um, that is a story that, you know, again... Um, was brought up again today and it's going to be uh one of many seth rollins actually was on i believe it was cbs radio but he was on um he was the first one who basically of, of the talent who said you know the whole thing was disgusting and things like that and then try to turn the focus on to you know promoting that he's going to be at wrestlemania and things like that but um so it appears that talent that that is out doing media has been told that they can they can talk about vince you know, it pri probably the ad advice is, you know, like, don't stonewall the question, but try to get off the subject as quick as possible and, and promote, you know, promote WrestleMania. But, um, you know, he wasn't, you know, he was there. He didn't head, you know, he didn't seem surprised by the question. Tomorrow's going to be interesting. Got a big press conference tomorrow. Um, it's a weird one because, you know, again, they booked the T-Mobile Arena, which is a story in and of itself, okay, because... The T-Mobile Arena was booked because Dwayne Johnson was going to be there. And the T-Mobile Arena was booked, um, I don't have the date, but it was it was weeks ago, long before the Royal Rumble, that, that was booked. So the so they knew when they booked it. And the reason it's booked, they booked, you know, the T-Mobile Arena is a giant building. The reason they thought, even though it's free and all that, that they could get, you know, again, you're probably expecting 10,000 people to be there. Um, on a Thursday at four o'clock, um, 
you know, the reason they expected that was because of Dwayne was going to be there. So the idea that, again, and I've said this before, the idea that of the, the story that Dwayne is, was brought back after the lawsuit, um, and they did not know of the lawsuit going in. Um, the date it was released or anything. Were there people who knew the allegations? I mean, I would hope that the upper management and the board knew. I mean, they knew some of it, but they didn't know when the thing was going to break. Um, but it, so so Dwayne coming back was does have nothing to do with um, the lawsuit and the and all that. Now, as far as people who were saying that, like the way that the storyline has gone with Cody as a way to divert from that thing. Um, I mean, it's possible that played into it, um, you know. I mean, I couldn't say that it didn't because it all happened afterwards. And I'm sure WWE is is thrilled that people are focusing on, you know, hating Dwayne Johnson as opposed to um, thinking about Vince McMahon and kind of being repulsed by the company. Because if you, you know, you know, so that's that's, you know, I mean, it was fortuitous in its weird way, but um it wasn't like the timing. It wasn't like Rock's. Oh man, we're in trouble. We got to call Rock. We're going to put Rock in this match, and then we started another problem. Um, it, that that wasn't the, the timeline. The timeline with, with again with Dwayne and uh, Roman Reigns and all that. That was uh, it. Dates to January third, and it was very clear that so few people knew because everybody knew that Roman Reigns was wrestling Cody Rhodes um, at WrestleMania. That was that was not a secret, but that also wasn't. You know, the Dwayne stuff. I mean, I knew about Dwayne, and Dwayne had brought it up. And every, you know, once Dwayne did that promo. Now, and I'm not talking about the, the, the one before, but the one, you know, the the first time when he mentioned Roman. I mean, you knew that that's where they were going. It's just a question of when would it be Mania, and Dwayne wanted it to be Mania, and that's true. You know, I mean, there are people who thought it might be better on another show. I mean, I know people who, you know, again, suggested the idea of uh, Saudi Arabia for Dwayne um, and Cody for WrestleMania. But Dwayne wanted, and Dwayne did want WrestleMania. So anyway, most likely uh, for on, on the, at the thing tomorrow, when the thing tomorrow was over, whatever they're doing, whether it's a three-way, which I was, you know, told it was not going to be, but whether it's them doing two matches, you know, where uh, Roman wrestles twice, or how they make this thing work, um, I was told it will likely be um, completed by the end of the press conference, that that is the plan. Well, I mean, they're doing a press conference at T-Mobile. I mean, yeah. you don't do a press conference at T-Mobile and sell lanyards and such for $500 and try and get 10,000, 12,000 people in there. You're not doing that just to say, hey, everybody, you know, we got some matches coming up. For yeah, me. yeah, no, but the point There's is, an angle of okay. some sort. Oh, there's going to be an angle, of course. But yes. the, thing, the, the thing is, is that, again, the reason I say it will probably be is because everything is subject to change. I mean, they can change it. They can literally change it till the week of the show if they want to. But this is probably, like, when they come, when this thing's done... This is most likely um, going to be the real card as opposed to a tease and, and you know, the beginning of another swerve down the road. So this is probably, probably it. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today. And